vlog, we're going to talk about the underdog story. Uh, today I've been driving back from Utah. I had to go drop off a camera that I rented down at uh, Salt Lake. And on the way back and on the way down this morning, I've had a few interesting phone calls with some close buddies. And uh, a lot of times while I'm driving, I spend a lot of time on the phone. Uh, many of you know this if you're close to me. I'll either hit you up or I just feed off of people I love. I love talking to people, I love feeding off of their stories and my stories and just like being able to build each other up. But I felt it was appropriate today with everything that's going on, with me getting married and uh, some of the success that I've been having to give you a little bit of the story and background of my underdog. How I am an underdog and how I've accomplished some of those things and how I've been able to overcome some of the challenges I face. Many of you don't know this about me, but I am extremely dyslexic. If you ask me to write anything, I will shy up, I will become weak, and I will stress. If you ask me to read in public, I will deflect and defer as much as possible. At an early age, I struggled in school. I struggled to read, I struggled to write, my grammar was horrible. In spelling tests, I had to memorize what the word looked like, not what it sounded like. As I went through my high school life and everything, um, I am obsessed with visuals. I used to grow, I used to draw and paint in high school while playing high school sports. And I was obsessed with light and just painting because I knew that that was my strength, but I'd never tell anybody because I played sports because it's not cool to be artistic. It's only cool if you can do the cool things. Well, I served a mission, as many of you know, an LDS mission, and the only way that I could teach was by having color-coded scriptures. So my Bible, my Book of Mormon was covered in color. Between neon greens and neon oranges, whatever it was, I could know exactly what that topic or that scripture was, what page, where it's at, because of the column and the color of what I put on that page. I soon went into college and I struggled. I wanted to overcome this weakness of dyslexia, so I studied English. Talk about some of the most miserable times of my life and depression that I've ever faced was in those times when I felt like I never amounted to much because I was trying to overcome a weakness that honestly became the greatest kick launch pad for myself. As I look back, I think it's silly that I tried to do such a thing because I should, I always focused on my strengths and that was always visual, but I always, I have this little chip on my shoulder that I want to overcome my weakness of dyslexia. I remember one of my like final semesters of college, uh, in order to pass the class, the professor had me go and take a test to prove that I was dyslexic because I already knew that I was. I've been told it my whole life. I've been through numbers of tests telling me that I was dyslexic and I had crazy amounts of strength in other areas, but when it came to grammar, writing, and reading, you might as well just throw me under the bus. Well, I had to do that in order to pass that test. And as I came in contact with a book recently uh, by Malcolm Gladwell, uh, David and Goliath, he goes over the story of dyslexics, and that is exactly who I am. I look at dyslexia as a strength, not a weakness. I know that I can struggle with content and writing it, even on social media. But I know that through my power of visuals that I can overcome them and I can impact the masses. I know that I may not be good at writing and I may not be fluid. I know that there's struggles and there's things that I forget like ED and INGs and all that stuff. But the base that helps me get through the day and find success is that I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So many people get caught up in their weaknesses and I find that like all they do is worry about their weakness and what they should have done and what they could have done. I hate to say it, you'll be in that mindset for the rest of your life unless you want to overcome it. Currently, 
telling you right now, I'm writing a book. Not really writing it, let's be honest. I'm speaking to my computer as I write a book. And then I'm having Megan and other people that are involved in my life look over these words and make sure that they're grammatically correct. But the truth of the matter is, is I want to tell my story. I want to tell my story of how I overcame one of the biggest weaknesses in my life and how you can do the same if you have the desire to. I may be good at photography. I may have natural talent. I may have, you know, things that I'm come easy to me, but I will tell you this right now. I wake up and I fear sometimes what the ridicule and comments that will come my way because of my my horrible sentences or because spell check doesn't know what I was suggesting for it to spell or I don't have a chance to speak into my phone to figure out what the spelling is because I have people around me and I'm embarrassed. I want you to know that success people all have a weakness. They all have something that they're trying to overcome and mine is dyslexia and I'm willing to take it on. Who he was and how he would take a loss. He would take a loss and make it a win. That's what made him a winner and 